time when fellow men and women with more melanin in their skin are being murdered by police. Marginalized, objectified, and commodified in front of our eyes and they're crying, Black Lives Matter. And I agree. You see, for me, being born in the 80s, I witnessed hip-hop hitting puberty through the filter of my TV. Rode the Soul Train to the mall and bought baggy jeans. You see, for, I used to fantasize playing Larry Bird one-on-one -on -one and I was magic. <laughs> yes, before he contracted, but still I grew up envying their blackness. And at the same time, blind to all the ways the system was designed to push them backwards. Maybe I was distracted because I was born 400 years after white men decided they were white and labeled everything else in sight as their right. You see, manifest destiny didn't just apply to our land, it applied to our fellow men. And I was born 150 years after Lincoln's abolished plans with a silver spoon in my hand. 50 years after their bloody fight for civil rights, when the free men and women were hung to quench the thirst of the Klan whose slippery hands infiltrated every branch of our land and sold us stories about the dangerous black man. So it's no wonder why blue trigger hands are so ready to shoot without proof, or why I tense up when I walk home at night and cross a group of hooded black youth. My friends, this culture of fear is proof of our poisoned roots. It has been proven that the descendants of Holocaust survivors may be born with post-traumatic stress disorder, PTSD. So wouldn't you agree that the same may be true for the great-grandchildren of slavery? How about the genes that were passed down to me? From the white families that were finally forced to set their black slaves free. I can't speak to the former, but I was born on the top of the ladder, with white skin and a cock that say that I matter. Blonde hair, blue eyes, glass ceilings need not apply, so why do I feel so alone? Why am I so afraid of asking for your help? That I need to do everything by myself. Maybe it's those distant ancestors' genes, the ones that assume they were entitled to everything, are still lingering. And they're wondering why I can't just buy my well-being. Or enslave my enlightenment. And this is the secret fight of white entitlement that allows people like me to sidestep the suffering of others until our suffering can no longer be covered by drugs, games, or getaways. And all we can do is blame someone else for our pain. Or worse, pretend it doesn't exist. And justify it by saying there are so many worse things to be than black in America. Can't we just move on? Fine, you won. How about we just say all lives matter? And it wasn't too long ago that I would have agreed. After all, we're all made of cells, flesh, and bones that evolved from our greatest grandparents who all roamed the African savanna, hiding from saber tooth, chasing down mongoose, and knocking boots, undeniable proof of our shared roots. But somehow along the way, the story about all lives mattering went astray, and the powers that be began to rank their people with poetic lines like all men are created equal, except for the native tribe women, gay, black, brown, and Asian lives who've been swept aside or vilified and then justified as maintaining order or fueling progress or making America great again. And yes, we have come so far, but at what cost to each other? At what cost to ourselves? Sure, I might be wrong, but what if I'm right? That by dismissing the parts and the people of this world that really need us, we're missing out on a life-changing kind of wisdom that only compassion can give us. But we're so fucking covered in our fears and beliefs that it's nearly impossible to see the cost of our apathy until we finally were finally forced to face our own tragedies. Let's not wait that long. Let's set down our guards and look at the scars that still need healing. Let's smile at everyone that might still need healing. Let's experience new cultures and organize to break these glass ceilings. These poisonous roots run deep and I won't, and I won't claim to have a solution for everything, but I'm done living in collusion with a system that places the other at the bottom of a broken ladder. So you, and to everyone listening, your voice is your power, and I stand with the fight to make black lives matter.
Thank you very much. I really appreciate everyone listening to that piece. I've been writing it for some time, working with an organization called Breaking White Silence. Um, and it's a, a group that's been committed to having these constructive types of conversations. Um, and I found it to be tremendously rewarding for me to tap into that pain that's been inside. Um, go through that shame and move into action, move into compassion, move into conversation. I feel that it has been healing and I offer that, that piece as an invitation to a conversation. If anyone is interested in exploring that, please see me after. There's a lot of resources out there and I'd be happy to share them. But I, thank you. Every religion has a rule, the golden rule they say. Love thy neighbor as thyself. But I think the biggest issue that we might have as a people of all religions and creeds is that we don't quite know how to love ourselves. So I wrote this piece about my journey with just that. Excuse me. I could use some help with loving myself. It's easy to judge myself or love something else, like babies or puppies, even cats, if you're into that. I am. Her name's Betty. It's a little less easy to love other people, I think, but even then the idea is a bit more clear. I love my mom, my dad, my brother, my sister, my wife, my best friends. They gave me life or saw me through thick and thin, so here we go again. I love you too. But what do we really mean by I love you too? If love is a verb, then does it mean that I bring you soup when you're sick? Or that I like your comments even when you're kind of being a dick? <laughs> or maybe it's that I sit with you in silence while you mourn the passing of your father. Or write you a card to celebrate the birth of your daughter. If love is a verb, then what do we write on the cards that we send ourselves? Hey, get well. How do we nurture ourselves back to health? So maybe I should turn love upside down and look at hate. The wall of fear above anger's gate, taking on fire from those we blame, trading cannonballs of shame where judgment reigns with absolute power. Man, it's cold in this lonesome tower, hearing my feelings hour after hour saying, you're not doing enough. You shouldn't have said that, you fucking idiot. You're so stupid and full of shit. How do I come back from that? So maybe love is a lie. And it's found in every cry for help. When we finally realize we can't do it by ourselves. That we were never really by ourselves. Sitting there beside ourselves to say it's okay. It's not your fault. You did the best you could. You're so strong. You're so good. I know. I know. I know how calluses grow around the pain of our youth to protect us from ever feeling that version of the truth that felt so real that if we ever went back we might not heal, we'd probably die so we'd better not feel what we felt then in our darkest hours so give me a drink or something sweet, really I insist whatever it takes to believe it doesn't exist but it did and it does so perhaps I'm just blaming the glove for the grip because it's me who slipped through no fault of my own, together with nurture and nature, we became the inventor of my pain centers. So maybe that's why Rumi said to be mindful, the wound is the place where the light enters. So maybe loving myself means centering on the unrest alive in my chest. Feeling the weight of this heavy lead vest while I'm breathing to soothe my need for escape. Nurturing every semblance that's left of my faith. That this might be the place where I taste the divine. So though I resist, I persist and realize that perhaps the proof of love is that we exist. Billions of cells bearing witness to this. Standing on the artifacts of evolution to hear the ceaseless sounds of space and time. With a mind almost capable of comprehending its own design. So maybe Mr. Rogers got it right. <laughs> and love is an active noun like struggle. A state of accepting someone as they are, right here, right now. Well, if that's true, then who are we right here, right now? 
Can we pause, breathe, and put a hand on our chest? Feel the storm of sensation upon the dawn of each breath and whisper these words as if sent from above. I love you. No matter what, you're everything. You're enough. And it's from that grounded place, when we love ourselves, that we can begin to see clearly what a gift this life is and how hard it is to get there. I so appreciated um, hearing my fellow silver tongue devil talk about battling depression. And I think each of us have that in our own way and acknowledging it and sharing it is such a gift. And when we go through that clearing and we find that space, what gifts we have to offer each other, what gifts we have to offer this world, what power we have in our voice to touch others. And it got me thinking about an analogy for creativity. A two-way street up and down the mountains of our lives, going down for supplies before we embark in uncharted heights, a dance of give and take, bottlenecks until bottle breaks and out comes life. When the moments we might meet our might, and we conquer the sight of the, blank, of the empty stage or the blank page, a stranger's gaze, and seize our days. You see, I think it boils down quite simply to the fact that we are creativity. Splitting cells naturally, stretching, crying, craving to see, taste, touch, feel, and breathe, believing, grieving, and still deceiving our own design with lines like, I'm not creative. I don't dance, and I definitely can't sing. Not even in the shower? How about after two or three happy hours when your guard comes down and you feel your power? The power to play. To make your way from the bed to the moon, but we keep burying our dreams in tombs of it's too soon. They won't understand. I'd better not say, and what's the point anyway? The point is any way. Learn about what you love and show us how it moves you how it soothes you, how it shows you the way. Because you decide to leave or stay, you determine to, if you'll fight or if you'll play. And yes, it begins and it ends today. So weigh the scales of give and take, but make no mistake, there is no given fate, there is only live and make. Make memories, make songs, make thank you cards, make new friends, bad choices, funny voices, make love, make breakfast. Make up. Make a fucking rocket ship. Make time to see something you've never seen. Make someone smile. Make yourself a bouquet of flowers. Make room for more and more mistakes along the two-way street of love and hate, fear and faith, laughter and wait. From time to time, to take in the view. For life is not only the things that we do. Life is this. Life is me. And life is you. Thank you very much. So, one more minute. All right. One more minute. This will be improvised. So I'm going I'm to channel Joel Gold. Spirits fold into the things I was told. The ancestors, archaeology, unlocked my soul. And so I fell into a bowl of Cheerio. Honey oats, and don't you know the things that I've earned aren't the things that I've sold. The things that I've borrowed are the things that I hold close to my heart. And when will I start to fall apart in front of you and show you that I am already broken? When can we dance together under the rain and see the words that we've spoken aren't the words that we've meant. And everything we've sent has been sent back since. So when will we make sense of this crazy world we've been given and live long enough to be forgiven? I have danced with angels and demons and now they call me the silver dung, silver tongued <laughs> heathen. <laughs>
And seasons change and we age in ways we could not explain to our yesterdays. So let's play, let's have fun, let's run, let's do things we've never done. Let's hold hands, let's dance in sidewalks and sing till we can't stand. Let's make love and make space for every race. Let's tell new stories about the way we'll change this place. Let's see this world, let's strip it naked. Let's be the ones who had to remake it. We are here, brothers and sisters, and I'm in love with you and this moment and this stage. Let's pass it on.